Hey everybody, and welcome back to Writing in the Dark, the video channel of me, author Tim Wagner. For those of you who don't know me, I've uh, traditionally published over uh, 50 novels of uh, horror, fantasy, dark fantasy, media tie-ins, uh, seven short story collections. Um, uh, came out with a How to Write book not long ago called Writing in the Dark, How to Write Horror. I've uh, won three Bram Stoker Awards, uh, and I teach creative writing at St. Clair College in Dayton, Ohio. Been there 20 years. Uh, matter of fact, today's topic came from one of my classes last week. In my novel writing class, one of the students just asked, you know, how do you make a story scary? And, of course, there are so many ways to do that, but I was trying to think of, you know, like, what are, like, maybe the top five that I could go ahead and, and, and give to him? And so that's what I want to talk about today, the top five ways to make a story scary. And since I'm recording this on Halloween, it's a great topic, so let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing to do is write with a close point of view. Um, horror is, an, is internal. It happens inside characters. And so you have to write your story from the inside out, from inside a character. What they are thinking and feeling and perceiving, and you have to stay in there. You write with a close point of view. Um, there is no horror unless it happens inside a character. Uh, horror movies are different. They can't do this. Uh, so we see it from the outside, and they do other things to create horror. They use special effects, they use lighting, they use sound, they use music that can affect the audience member who watches passively. And uh, But you try to write a prose story that way, it's terrible. Uh, you need to write a prose story as if you are the character living these moments. And then that's the experience you give your reader. When they read it, they can feel like they're living that story with the character. And it creates all kinds of things. It allows us to, you know, care for the character. It allows us to worry about the character's fate. We can empathize with them. Um, it allows us to, to feel their fear. Uh, so writing with immersive point of view is probably the single most important, important thing you can do to write a scary story. Okay, number two, write your story with vivid details. Um, this is always a good idea, but in horror it's really important because the vivid details are the things that create the fear inside your characters. The things they are seeing, the things they are hearing, and then their internal reactions to the things they see and hear. Uh, emotional reactions, physical reactions, like if you're, you know, feel a tightening of the gut, it's a physical reaction. Um, I mean, it's emotional, but the body responds to the emotion. Uh, and this makes a huge, huge difference. Um, if you just, you know, say a monster came up behind Bob, grabbed him, and ate him, there's nothing. But if, you know, you talk about Bob walking through the woods and he hears a twig snap behind him, and it's already kind of cold, but suddenly it feels a lot colder, and maybe he hears a sound that sounds like heavy breathing, like of something huge and animalistic behind him, but he's not sure he hears it, all those details are going to work so much better to create a story uh, than just, here comes a monster and it eats Bob. So using vivid details are huge. Um, you also, number three, want to give your story an emotional core. Um, a lot of beginning horror stories I see are basically like this. It's random serial killer hunts random victim because they love killing and they kill the victim. The end. Um, there's nothing to that. That story's empty. But if you take the victim and it's a, make the victim a single parent, uh, male or female, it doesn't matter, and this par the, the spouse of the parent, has died earlier, maybe not that long ago, maybe like in a car wreck or something, a uh, sudden kind of violent death, and it's traumatized the kids. And so the parent isn't so much worried about being killed by the serial killer as he or she is abandoning those kids and traumatizing them further by having yet another parent die a horrible death. Um, that gives the story a strong emotional core. And what was once just a boring everyday serial killer story now becomes something a lot more. Um, so you want to give, you know, your stories an emotional core. I think it's true for any kind of story, but it's, it's really true for horror. The core can be something that is just already there, that the horror impacts, like the parent already has a fear of abandoning the children, uh, and that it's just the serial killer kind of activates that or interacts with that fear. Or it can be uh, uh, connected to the horror. You know, maybe your character is experiencing a haunting, but it's in their own house, and maybe it's one of their relatives or something. Um, that it has passed and is now haunting somebody who they thought loved them but is now, for some reason, a malicious entity and they can't understand why. Um, either of those will work, but it's important to have uh, an emotional core. If you're writing a novel, I'd say you might want to think about both, maybe. Uh, having an uh, uh, emotional core that's not connected to the horror and one that maybe is, uh, especially if you have different characters. Uh, all right, number four, you want to create effective atmosphere. Um, 
the big secret about writing horror is that while it's really cool to come up with new ideas, uh, fresh spins on old tropes, writing about weird stuff that you've observed in the world uh, that maybe nobody else has ever written about, uh, you can write the, about, use the same tropes that everybody uses. Here's a ghost, here's a haunted house, here's a vampire, here's a werewolf, here's a zombie. And the way you write that story can make it effective. Um, I mean, Stephen King, all of his ideas for his stories are pretty plain. Here come vampires, here are ghosts. It's the way he writes the characters and the atmosphere he creates and the way he develops suspense that makes those stories so effective. It's the way he tells the tale. And so you want to try to do the same thing. Now, all these other things we've talked about up to now can help create atmosphere, but that's the mood or the feeling of a, a given story and even in a given scene. So it, uh, one of the things you're often taught, like in creative writing class, is just describe a bunch, but they don't tell you to describe with intention. So uh, uh, regardless of whether you do this, plan it out, or write a rough draft and go back uh, and fix it, um, you want to think about what's the uh, emotional uh, effect of this scene. So if the emotional effect you want is desperation, uh, that kind of atmosphere, you're going to use details that create desperation. If it's sorrow, you're going to use details that create that. Um, the details can be, you know, or just in line with the feeling. The cliche is the funeral, you know, the graveside service where it's raining. But you can also do something that's opposite to create a counterpoint, which is that the sun is shining. And to a character, it seems super unfair that the world is so beautiful and the person who's dead isn't here to experience. But you want to, and it still creates that feeling of sorrow. Um, so, you know, you want to go ahead and do this best way uh, with any of these things, really, is to go through writers that you really admire and see how they do it themselves. Uh, maybe see if you can't label a scene, this is a sorrow scene or a desperation scene or whatever, and then see what kind of details they use to create that effect. And then practice doing the same thing yourself. Okay, number five is show your characters experiencing fear. This is a big one, and I see it also in fantasy stories, science fiction stories, any kind of story where something out of the ordinary or seemingly impossible occurs to a character, they have no reaction to it. Uh, I mean, they may interact with it, they may talk to it, they may even run from it, but there's no reaction inside themselves. So you want to show the characters experiencing fear. Fear is emotional, it's mental, it's physical. Uh, and so, and they, all those three qu qualities interact in different ways. Um, you know, if, uh, like for example, you know, your body gets filled with adrenaline when you're afraid, especially if it's like you're confronted with, you know, right in your face danger. Well, one of the things that happens when you're filled with adrenaline is that you can't do um, precise movements. Um, you can only do big movements. So if your character tries to reach for something, they may overreach it. They may knock it over because they don't have fine motor control at that moment. Um, the reason why people feel chilled when they're horror is because your, 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 your veins and capillaries dilate or, um, to, to manage your blood flow, and it creates a chilling feeling. So one of the things you can do is just do some quick research on the net. It's easy. You know, look up effects of fear, physical effects of fear, uh, mental, emotional effects of fear. Um, look up short-term and long-term, too, because long-term, if you have character, especially like in a novel, where maybe in the past they've had, uh, you know, they were attacked by vampires as a kid, and now they're adults and vampires are coming back. You know, they're going to have PSTD and all kinds of other things. So um, look at that. Make yourself a list so that you have it next to you when you're writing your horror stories. Um, you don't have to put in every single possible, you know, response that people can have in terms of fear. But you want to go ahead and be able to do more than just say, you know, somebody was horrified. Somebody experienced horror. That's not vivid. That does, it's not specific. So um, it's a huge thing you can do to make your horror stories more effective. So all these things, write with a close point of view, write with vivid detail, give your story an emotional core, create an effective atmosphere, and then show your characters experiencing fear. These are all things that you can go uh, find examples of for yourself, writers you admire that you think did a good job, short fiction, long fiction, whatever. Um, take a look at scenes that they've written and go through those scenes and look at how they do all of these things. Or if it's a short story, you can do the whole thing because it's a lot easier. Or maybe a chapter in a book. See how they do each of these five things. Um, you can even, if you want, go ahead and uh, use highlighters, you know, uh, match different color highlighters to these different qualities and highlight that text to see the kind of pattern, the formula, the recipe that that particular writer uses to create all these effects and create effective horror. All right, some examples that I can give you that uh, you might check out. Edgar Allan Poe's Telltale Hearts are a really good one. Um, Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door. Um, it's extreme horror. Um, 
a lot of people don't think of of uh, they think of atmosphere especially as being like subtle and quiet like whispers and hint of movements and uh, stirring in the shadows but extreme horror can create really effective atmosphere too it's just done differently um, and his work always has a strong emotional core it's wonderful uh, it's, it's a hard work to read but um, it's well worth it a um, couple modern examples uh, Stephen Graham Jones the only good Indians great great novel and so is Alma Katsu's The Hunger uh, so these are some ones you can check out if you want to go ahead and see, you know, some masters at work in terms of using all five of these qualities. So the re most recent release I got, you can check out and see how I do, is the novelization of Halloween Kills. So, you know, it's because it was a movie originally, I had to find other ways to create the feeling of suspense and horror and whatever, and I used all these five techniques, and you can see how I did. So, uh, uh, hope you found that useful. If you have any ideas for other topics you'd like me to cover in the future, just drop them in the comments. Otherwise, you know, thanks for uh, listening, and I'll see you next time.